everything in the work of Christ is for us. Mm-hmm. He's not doing, you know, he wasn't bored in heaven mm-hmm. and thought, well, I'll go hang out. Mm-hmm. I'll become a man and hang out on earth. Yeah. He came to earth entirely to do for us, because of sin, what we could not do for ourselves. But yes, passive obedience is seen um, in somebody being punished for sin. Passive, going to prison, for passive example. Passive obedience right. being going to prison. And again, Turretin has, a, I just since I just read him, I'm really up on what he's saying about it. He says, no man would imagine that a murderer being put to death, so the, 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 the king's command, he said, for murderers as being carried out. No man would imagine a murderer being put to death. It would be said of him, he has kept the law. No, he's paying for his violating the law, but keeping the law is another matter. And that's the active obedience. His active obedience would be not to have murdered this person. And in fact, in terms of God's law, it's not enough to just in a negative way kind of not hate our neighbor too much we actually have to love our neighbor as ourself which of course all of this because we're in the state we're in in a fallen state always our sin is shown to us i mean that's always that first function of the law Mm -hmm. yes we talk about a second function in terms of informing civil authority we talk about a third in being a rule of gratitude and it is and that's very important but it's always it's it's not one or the other it's always doing all three of these things it's always showing us our sin but yes going to prison going to your room uh to because you didn't uh you didn't play well with your brother or sister. You were you were fussing, or or being denied dessert because you haven't eaten your peas. <laughs> That's a sort of passive obedience. And you know it, it does say that God that that to obey is better than to sacrifice. So you know it it isn't the case that if you if you don't eat your peas and your mom says you don't get your dessert that that somehow you're going to get that dessert that's your punishment but you're you know you're not going to get it because you're not going to get it later that night because you were denied it at 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 dinner that's your punishment uh if you had eaten those peas you would have gotten the dessert and that would have been active obedience so again i i do think um i do think camden that that in a host of ways this is very much a part of our reality it's part of the the structure yeah, that we deal with all the time, and not just a, an an optional thing. Of course, not everyone in the pew is always using the technical terms, but they they could. These these aren't necessarily hard things to understand, right. but the imputation of Christ's active obedience is is important. Our 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 favorite Jay Gresham Machen said, "I'm so thankful for the active obedience of Christ. No hope without it." Right. It was a his final telegram to uh, John Murray, to John Murray yeah. when he was dying. Yeah. Yeah. And I have to say this, your readers might find this interesting. I happen to be present. This isn't hearsay. I had the the great privilege uh, when I went to Westminster Seminary of being the assistant to Grace Mullen, and she had a, a tremendous impact on my life. In fact, if she's the reason, humanly speaking, I'm in the OPC, so don't blame her too much. She's still a wonderful <laughs> person, but she really deeply impacted me. And I remember once she was looking at some materials uh, from an evangelical press that had come out, and this would have been in the 80s when I was at Westminster. And I I don't recall the details. I just recall her reaction. Somehow or another, uh, this, this press had gotten wrong, or this writer had gotten wrong what Machen said, and had him saying, I'm so thankful for my active obedience (laughs) to Christ, as if that were his comfort, his assurance as he lay dying. And the response, the the look on dear Grace Mullen's face was, she was horrified. Mm She was as she wet, read it in that whisper, that librarian whisper, and and said, "This is terrible because For my you know, active obedience, my active obedience." But no I, hope I without think it. what that showed, I think, I think what that highlighted, Camden, is the yeah. fact that evangelicals have tended in 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 
recent decades particularly, but, well, you see the connection with covenant theology because evangelicals have tended to just emphasize the passive, Mm -hmm. that Christ died on the cross for our sins, and amen to that. Mm -hmm. I mean, because we know that that is even under attack now. You have people attacking the cross as cosmic child abuse yeah. uh, and substitutionary uh, penal uh, penal substitutionary atonement that has been under attack by people who call themselves evangelicals but yeah. older evangelicalism understood Christ died on the cross for our sins mm-hmm. but not clearly and not well that he also kept the whole law for us and, and Turretin makes the point when he's making the point it's the whole obedience he says the reason that we even talk about and emphasize in a separate manner the active is because subsequent to Calvin as we began to develop more in covenant theology and to understand the place of of Christ keeping the law for us fulfilling the covenant of works People like Johannes Piscator and others rose up and explicitly denied it. And he said, so the, he, he basically gave as a kind of apologia the reason I'm even taking pains and, and, and treating it separately as active obedience is because it's been denied. It's sort of like what happens in the whole history of the church. The church is implicitly believing things, it develops it, and then an Arius hears what is being said and says no when Christ is said to be of the same substance with the Father. And this is the this is the expression of the faithful. And so really what you have in the Reformation, you have this this natural expression being given, this, this developing out of all of this rich uh, reformational theology of the 16th century, and people like Piscator who say, no, 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 it's strictly the death of Christ. It's strictly, and they're the ones who distinguish, if you will, so that we then have to say, no, it's the, it's the whole obedience. It's the mm-hmm. active and the passive. 